So yeah, I didn't really pick the Power Trio format. And for my next project, which is going to be uh, together hopefully by the summer, uh, it's going to be me on lead vocals and lead guitar, uh, a second guitar player to back me up, uh, a bass player, and a drummer. So I'm going to finally get the four-piece that I wanted. But um, yeah, uh, I prefer four-piece bands, personally, um, like to play in. Um, I'm not too keen on too many more members uh, with a trio, it can get a little hard to get like a solid stereo kind of power. Uh, um, like with like for example, me bringing two guitars into the mix for this next project uh, live, that is going to sound incredible because uh, two guitars doing the same thing or two guitars doing different things will add so much more stereo space. Um, so that's why I prefer more instruments, but at the same time, not too many different elements. Um, I find it hard sometimes to get a good um, raw and powerful sound out of just a, um, a trio. I think we did an okay job, not too bad. Uh, with I guess we just used enough volume. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, some some power some trios can sound a little weak uh, if they're mixed a certain way. Um, but I find with um, four-person bands, they they don't have too much trouble getting energy. Also, um, having one of your members stuck behind a mic and playing an instrument at the same time, uh, well, it's not as fun visually as yeah. a guy walking around with a mic stand and then two guys completely freaking out playing guitar and bass or whatever. So that's just what I like. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I guess it's an opinion thing, so I can't be wrong, but... This is my opinion. Well, you could always be a guitarist who um, sings and then jumps on, he jumps out into the audience. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. While playing guitar still. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now, this is one question I uh, have to ask the hiatus. Yeah. The step defectors. Yeah, okay, so we all have different things going on. Um, John, our drummer, has Cloud Everest, and those guys are doing a really good job. They're busy. Um, I think that they're... I think they have recording plans, but I'm not sure. Don't take that from me. I don't know anything, okay? <laughs> so don't, like, have expectations. Um, but they're definitely playing a ton of shows, so if you go to their Facebook page, you can check that out and figure out where they're playing and go and see them, because they're definitely worth it. Um, so that's what he's up to. Uh, with the Step Defectors, it was kind of hard... Um, cause he's in the York area and so is, um, Cloud Everest. Well, the step defectors is in Oshawa and it was hard to get him over to us frequently. And on top of that, our guitarist, John Eccleston was in, um, he's in Trent, uh, Peterborough in Trent, uh, Trent in Peterborough. Uh, Trent you so he's doing that and he could only show up for rehearsal once every two weeks Which is pretty not good for a band. So I just decided like we're not gonna be able to do too much right now. Anyways I'm in a really difficult program. You guys are in really difficult programs um, We might as well just take a break Go our own ways. I have something that I want to do John Eccleston started up a shoegaze band in Trent um, at Trent um, and then the other John has Cloud Everest, so we all, we're all busy, but the step defectors are on hold, uh, until, I, I don't know when, I mean, not sure when we're going to get back together, but it'll probably be quite a while, so, but there's a ton of other good music coming out from all three of us, um, in the meantime anyways, so it's not too much of a loss. I'm, uh, eagerly anticipating, uh. When I'll send you that track, track, man. I'll send you. I'll send you something to keep you like a little, you know, <laughs> a little happy. <laughs> Can't wait. Yep. How long have you been playing um, guitar? Guitar for? Uh, I was thinking about that the other day. Um, I started when I think I was like twelve slash thirteen. I started when I was twelve, but it was like in December or November or something. It was winter and. I was born in the winter. I was born December 11th. 
Um, so it was, I was 12 when I started playing, but I soon turned 13. So bass, because I started with bass and I played it for a year before I got my first guitar. I think it's been six years now, about five or six years. Um, and guitar has been about four or five years. So, yeah. Hmm. All right. Singing for a few months. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Bands you're into now? Right now? Yes. Um, right now, I've been listening to a lot. I've been, I've been listening to quite a range of different stuff. Um, I recently discovered, because I live under a rock, I only recently discovered Gary Clark Jr. <laughs> He's like a ridiculously great blues musician. Um, and you should definitely check him out, no matter what genre of music you like, because he's got everything. Like, it's great. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Static X. Uh, like, Wayne Static passed away recently. Uh, and then it got me into Static X. Like, really love that stuff. The vocals are used as, like, a rhythmic element as opposed to just, like, a melodic element. Um, like, it, it's, it's used more like in... It's kind of like a guitar. It's like almost like vocal riffs, in a way, um, which I really like. Uh, and it's powerful stuff and relatable stuff. Um, listening to a lot of... Um, hmm, let me go over to my iTunes and find out. <laughs> uh, Foo Fight I've been listening to the first Foo Fighters album a lot because it's my favorite Foo Fighters album. Um, Death From Above. I'm not a big fan of the new album that just came out, but... You know, to each their own. Alice in Chains, I'm listening to a lot of. Um, I'm listening to um, a lot of Hendrix stuff, but I always listen to Hendrix stuff. So I've been listening to a lot of Caius lately, and I just got into Megadeth a little bit. Their lyrics are kind of meh, in my opinion. Um, but the guitars are there, so that's cool. Uh, that's what I've been listening to lately, yeah. Do you like a lot of stoner rock? Yeah, um, I'm not the biggest into the psychedelic stuff. Uh, and it's good, and there's definitely some psychedelic stuff that I like, um, but it's not like my biggest thing. Um, but I do like stoner. Stoner. Um, I think I prefer stoner metal. Uh, so stuff like Caius, it's just awesome. So <laughs> yeah. Name your five favorite post rock bands. Oh, I don't even know five books for our pants, man. <laughs> I could give you my favorite, and that would be Russian Circles. I actually don't listen to post rock that much. Um, it's more like a, a mood thing for me. Like, it, depends. It, it takes a really specific mood for me to want to listen to post rock. Um, so I don't really listen to too much post rock, but definitely R Russian Circles. Um, Explosion of Sky, Explosion of Sky are okay. They're a little light for me. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I like Russian Circles, basically. Um, your band name. Why did you pick the Step Defectors as your band name? I had two different names. Um, I have a giant list of band names on my computer, like possible ones. Um, and there are two band names. I could find them right now for you. There's two different band names. Um... And basically, the first one had the first part of the name, and the second one had the second part of the name, and I just put them together, and it sounded better than both the other names, yeah. so. Um, it was, I have the list, I'm just trying to find the names. The Step Renegades and um, Everybody's Defectors. So I just put them together to the Step Defectors. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I, well, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. I mean, it wasn't like a story, unfortunately, like, it's not like something happened and it, then a name came out of it. I wish it was like that, but it's not. Uh, it's really just me thinking, like, if an idea came to mind, I would just write it down. And then I was just going through the names because I needed something to call this thing and just put those together. So, yeah. You could have named it Patent Pending. <laughs> or something a, like that. There's a band <laughs> called that, though, so I think you didn't. Now, this is a non-musical question. Okay. Um, 
I like non-musical questions too. <laughs> Graphic design. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in, in high school, grade nine, I took visual art and during the parent teacher interview, the teacher for, um, my visual arts class suggested that I would be interested in communication technology, com tech, um, which focuses on photography, film, graphic design, stuff like that. Um, so I went and talked to the same, like same time. I just went over and talked to the contact teacher and she told me about the course and it sounded interesting. So I got into it. And, uh, so in grade 10, I took contact. Um, and it was good. I really liked it. Like working with Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator, uh, to create things digitally. Because I'm not like the best drawer out there or painter or anything, but I could do things on a computer. Uh, so I started with that and she actually passed away, uh, I think in grade 12. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I could be wrong. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Um, but yeah, so she got me into graphic design and everything. And then uh, actually while she was still alive, I told her I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do... Um, graphic design as a career like originally I wanted to be like an aeronautical engineer and then like a lawyer like a whole bunch of stuff that I couldn't ever do so I was really lucky <laughs> so yeah um yeah I applied to a bunch of design schools uh York University being one of them it's a joint program between York and Sheridan it's a really nice design program they only let in like I think it's like 150 people or 200 people or something like that a year and I got in, so it was cool. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. And I, this program is so hard. I'm slowly, <laughs> I'm slowly liking design a little less. Um, at least while I'm in the program, I don't know. It's I like I love design, but I don't know. I have an interesting design style too. It's like messy and cut up and thrown together, while other people are doing all the nice stuff. I can do the nice stuff, but I just don't like to. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's my design thing. I do all the design for my stickers and for my um, I have posters like these posters up here, which you probably can't even see. I'll get um, I'll get a close up. I don't know if you can really see them, but I can see um, them. I des I design those. Um, I design a lot of stuff, you know. Like I just like that sort of thing. So that's what I do. It's good to have a designer in a band, though, you know? Like, you don't have to pay someone else to do your art or your, you know, packaging. For T-shirts or anything. Goes along with the DIY. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of T-shirts, when will you be producing Step to Vector T-shirts? We were talking about it while the band was still a thing. I don't know if we're ever going to do it. It'd probably be fun to do, like, 10 or something to give out to the friends. Um... Which is actually not that expensive to press ten shirts, so who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll get you a shirt, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, no, I have no I have no objections to that at all. <laughs> no objections to that. It's pretty uh, simple to do, so why not? Now I know how many amplifiers do you have? I because I see a Marshall in the background right there. Yeah, those are my amps. Um, actually. Let's go over there. It's my room, by the way. It's all nice and I have all the guitars, which has a bunch of empty hangers because I took them all off just now. <laughs> um, I'll turn the light on. So, I have a Marshall DSL-40C, um, which is a tube amp, uh, and it's my main amp uh, for guitar. Uh, ridiculously awesome, really loud, perfect for gigging, uh, haven't had a problem with it yet. Then I have a Fender, um, Rumble 350 for my bass. Um, it's a two 10 inch speaker with one, uh, tweeter and a ton of EQ options. It's solid state, so it's reliable, but, you know, with bass amps, I don't really care about tube or solid state, uh, cause I find the solid state sounds good enough for me. Um. But I'll probably get a tube amp eventually. Uh, I have the Squire, which is here for... Wait, can you even see that? Yeah, there it is. Which I have for no reason. It came with my first guitar. <laughs> and then I have um, 
I don't know if you can see that. It's a R Randall um, RB30XM, which came with my first base. So, uh, yeah, you know, simple, simple stuff. Uh, I don't really use those two smaller amps. Um, I basically just run through the big ones. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I'm doing for gear uh, amp-wise. Those so. are a lot of pedals, by the way. I, I noticed in the back. <laughs> well. Yeah, actually, I might pedals. as well show you those. I might as well show you those too. Um, okay, so I don't use this thing. It's a DS one that I modded, um, basically turning into a fuzz pedal. Uh, I I used to have it on there. I used to use it for like death from above stuff when I'm running my bass through it. Um, this is an awesome drive pedal that I used for all the step defector stuff. The guitars went through this, the bass went through this. Um, it's a good pedal. Um, don't buy visual sound stuff though, because they break. <laughs> so, I mean, at least they're pedals. Um, like this pedal, the tremolo pedal. Um, I'll just show you down here because it's hooked up, but, um, can you even see that? Okay. Tell me if you can see my pedal board. I can see your pedal board. I okay. see the chromatic tuner and the yeah. big muff. The Boss chromatic tuner is the best tuner that you will ever buy. Um, that is a Dunlop GCB95, I think they're called. Uh, the normal ones. Normal wall pedal. Uh, MXR Super Badass Distortion. Um, for This is for guitar. Uh, this board is for guitar now, just so you guys know, because I'm playing guitar in my new project. So everything here is for guitar. Um, from Alright, so basically it goes tuner, wall pedal, uh, super badass distortion, that into the bass big muff, um, which I use for feedback and um, really thick low down riffs. Just sounds good. It's more for fun than practicality. Uh, I'll probably use it on solos and interesting little parts. And that goes into the Corona Mini Chorus, which is a great chorus pedal. Um, the boost is in the, uh, the boost there, the electro harmonics one that is in the effects loop of my Marshall. Um, just to give it a clean volume boost as opposed to just driving the front of the amp harder. So that's what I'm doing for pedals. It's all on a pedal train. I don't even know. It's, I think it's Pedal Train Junior, I think. Um, so, yeah. And I'm running it with uh, Planet Waves um, solderless cables. Solderless, uh, it's from the cable kit. So you get, like, absolutely no signal loss. Well, not absolutely no, but as little signal loss as possible. Um, so those are good. Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing for gear right now. Nice that you have something called a pedal train. You're on the pedal train to Sonic Heaven. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I guess. All right, and I noticed your acoustics in the background as well. Yeah. Um. Nothing much to show, really. Um. I got this here. This tiny little first act, which sounds absolutely terrible. It's not even in tune. <laughs> so yeah, it's dusty too. Oh, you know. Um, I'll just, I'll just grab them, uh, my other acoustics right now. I'll show you guys this one first. This is the first guitar I ever touched. Um, it's my dad's. It's a first deck acoustic. It's pretty bad. Um, I don't even think it's in tune. That is kind of... No, it isn't. <laughs> like, yeah. um, it's a short scale. It's for learning. It's It doesn't sound good or anything. This is my favorite acoustic. This is a Yamaha. I forget what it's called. It's a Yamaha FG342. Um... <laughs> good very resonant you probably can't hear it through the speakers at all um you can, I, I, you can hear it it sounds good it's, oh yeah it sounds good it's good you know um it does what 
I needed to do. If I ever need to track acoustic, I'll use this. Mainly because I have nothing else <laughs> to track acoustic through. It's fun, you know? Um, this was used. Uh, uh, my mom got it from one of her friends at work who was training it up because he didn't need it. Um, so I got it for barely anything, even though it's worth quite a bit. It's a really good acoustic. I, I have no complaints. Uh, it's got a V-shaped uh, neck profile, so it's nice and like comfortable for chords. Yeah. Not too much for the faster stuff, but um, I don't need it for faster stuff anyways. I've got an electric for that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's my gear, I guess. Um, I don't have anything else to show, uh, except for the special narcotics you use to create good music. <laughs> don't do drugs. <laughs> yes, kids, don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Uh, what was it like playing your first show uh, for the Step Defectors? At, I believe it was at the Mustache Club. It was at the Mustache Club, yeah. August 29th, if, correct me if I'm wrong. Damn, I don't even know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, I wow. was at your second show. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Um, it was cool. Um, we were the first band to go on, uh, so we had time at the beginning to talk to the sound guy and everything, and he was a really nice guy. And he, like, hung out with us before the show started and everything. Showed us his guitars and whatnot on his phone. Um, and, yeah, it was really relaxed. The bands were really nice to us. Um, we were prepared. It was good. We played. It was okay. <laughs> um, you know, there was, like, some nerves. Um, some more than others. I, was, I wasn't nervous for some reason. It was weird. Um, I just felt so comfortable. The guys there were great people. Um, it was a fun time, you know, like, um, no problems. Uh, actually John broke a guitar string before we, uh, before we got to the mustache club and lucky enough for him, I bought a pack of strings that day. <laughs> so we were able to change that. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing bad happened during the show. We played, it was pretty okay. You know, like not too many people. The energy was a little low, especially lower than the show that you went to. Um, but it was it was a good time. I think we played okay. Like, not the best we ever played, but we played all right, you know? Uh, do you have any videos online of your performances? Um, we have two videos of us rehearsing in the basement. We have two videos of the show that you went to. I actually have the whole show filmed, um, minus most of East-West Complex at the beginning. <laughs> Um, but the rest of the show I, I've pretty much f filmed. Um, it's not up though. There's only two songs for that show up. Um, are pathetic and fossil. Are pathetic and fossil. Yeah, and those are the same from the um, basement videos. It's are pathetic and fossil. Um, from our Mustache Club show, someone posted a video of us playing Overthought. Not the best rendition of Overthought, but it was alright. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what that's what we have up online on YouTube, and we have a YouTube channel. Um, we're not doing too much on it anymore, but uh, or at least not right now. But um, yeah, you can go and check us out there. Now, uh, speaking as someone who hails from that part of uh, the GTA, what was it like playing in uh, in the Clarkson area of Mississauga, Ontario, on the thirtieth of August? Well. Uh, I probably it probably wasn't like a traditional show, seeing as we booked the venue ourselves and we played it ourselves. We actually lost money at that show that, <laughs> instead of making it. <laughs> but um, you know, it was a uh, it was good. Like you came out, that was awesome. Uh, we met you there, uh, and a bunch of other people came out. Most of them left before we even started playing. But yeah. you know, the people stayed. Definitely made it special. It was good. It was the best at the factory show. Uh, there isn't that many to compare it to, but um, <laughs> it was the best at the factory show. It was fun, you know. It was probably one of the more fun shows I've ever played, so, yeah. Hmm. Now, I have a, another question for you. 
Actually, wait, wait, before oh, we go on, go on. Um, I just remembered the first Step Defector show, technically, it wasn't at a venue, it was in John's backyard, but we technically played then. We have video, um, it's not up though, and it was with our first singer, Tim, <laughs> like he was from the band. Uh, so yeah, we technically played that show first, but I guess it wasn't really a show, so... Yeah. Continuing on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if it's punk rock, your first show could be in a bathroom. <laughs> so, I guess. Uh, yeah. It was a nice backyard. <laughs> um, pizza. Sure. Um, why? <laughs> uh, it's good. <laughs> there were there was some at that uh, show in Mississauga. <laughs> you know. Um, it's good. I guess. I mean, people like it. <laughs> pizza's good. Just thought I'd ask. About yeah, I don't think I've written any songs about pizza. Maybe I should get on that. Mm. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> Step Defectors doing a pizza song. Or something. <laughs> um, oh. This is a very interesting question I have for you. Tell me. Having two Johns in the band, does it ever get that was hard? Oh my, yeah, exactly. It's weird, man. I don't. I, uh, I wish we gave one of them a, a nickname, but I knew them both long enough that we had to call them John. Otherwise, it would just be weird. So <laughs> yeah, it was hard. Sometimes you'd call someone and someone else would answer. But <laughs> and then like when you're explaining things to people, like oh yeah, John, you know, did this, and it was awesome. It's like, well, which John? <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, it was, it was weird. It was weird. It was funny, <laughs> but it was weird. Hmm. Do you ever, when, do you ever plan on playing the Masonic Lodge? Uh, sure. I mean, I'll play anywhere, man. <laughs> I'll play <laughs> anything. <laughs> well, no, I, I asked because the Masonic Lodge, as you may already know, is the, the Apollo of Mississauga. The Masonic Lodge. Um, is well... I'm not really a Mississauga-based musician. Um, I'm more Oshawa-based. Um, so I'd probably try to get big in Oshawa first, like as a local act. Or the Toronto area, I'd probably... The way, all right, so the places I would probably like to venture into first and become a local act, a well-known local act, would probably be um, Toronto and Oshawa. Uh, but I know that there's like a big thing going on in Mississauga right now with musicians, um, at least from what I hear. So, sure, I, I like, I would play anywhere, <laughs> like anywhere, uh, and I'm fine with it. So, and every venue, it doesn't matter what the venue is, um, I'm going to give my all at any venue. Um, so really putting, um, a lot of, importance on one venue as opposed to another it might phase me a little bit and might make me a little um timid and i so i try not to think about it um so yeah i mean like playing that place i would play it the same way i'd play any other place i mean i'd be grateful to get a gig anywhere so like <laughs> it really doesn't matter <laughs> to me i mean if i'm playing the air canada center then that might throw me off a little bit but you know I don't really, I like the small venues, they're fun, you know? The people are real. What drives you to play music? Um, I think it's a love for music, uh, because I have this weird thing where if I like something, I have to be able to do it as well, which is weird. Um, like, I love baseball but I can't play baseball at all, so I slowly <laughs> fell out of love with baseball. But I love music, and I could play music, and it's just, a, music's definitely the most important thing in my life right now, I think. Um, it's, it's something that isn't, you can't touch it, and you can't see it, and it's important um, to me. Uh, I feel like there are certain people who can't feel music, um, the way probably me, uh, you you feel music, I feel like you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah. How like music is so much more important than so many other things, and it can completely help you through the worst times, and it can completely make the good times even better. Um. 
So I want to connect with other people and I want to share what I've been through so that other people know that other people are going through it as well. So it, I feel like it's, it's twofold. One, it's ridiculously fun and a good time and it's cool and I love it. And two, um, I want to connect with people uh, and I want to get my stuff out there and show people. So that's that's what music is uh, for me and that's what keeps me going. So, yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah, I thought you would. Miss Sugar. Oh, yeah. Miss <laughs> Sugar. Okay. Uh, okay, I started listening to Meshuggah mainly because I remembered their name and I didn't know what they sounded like at all. I just heard about them a few times, so I YouTubed them, and then it was incredible. <laughs> and it was awesome. I just love that, like, low-down, like, epic stuff. So I just got a ton of their music and listened to it like crazy, and they're fun, and they're funny, like, to mention. <laughs> so... That's why I mention Meshuga everywhere I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More people need to listen to Meshuga, man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once you said you weren't really into more than six strings on a guitar and four strings on a bass. Mm -hmm. Why is why would, is there a specific reason why you have that kind of preference? Or... Uh, yeah. I'm used to six strings and I'm used to four strings. Like I don't need anything else. Um, like I am more than content writing music on those guitars. Then I like, I don't need another string and it, it changes the way you play as well. Like, um, you'll, uh, you have to learn, you kind of have to learn how to play a guitar with more strings or a bass with more strings. Not really. It's, it's, it's a pretty bad way of putting it, but, um, it's different and you have to get used to it. I think, at least that's for me. Um, and yeah, also like four string basses and six string guitars just look cooler <laughs> than <laughs> five string basses and, you know, seven, eight, nine string guitars, in my opinion. So, you know, you know, Hendrix didn't need another string to be good, you know. I think he Duff McKagan that. didn't need another string to be good. I'm content. I mean, like, I don't really, I don't, I don't, I'm just not interested in more strings. String gauge. Yeah. What's okay. So string gauge. I went up a gauge recently on guitar. I originally played um, nine through uh, what is it forty two? I think nine through forty two. Nice. Actually, um, you can see all these things here on my wall. Those are all string packs. Um, I have more guitar string packs, but I need to finish a row of bass string packs before I can like keep going with the guitar string ones. But yeah, uh, so you can basically see like the string gauges I used to use and what I use now. I started this like a month ago, so it's like pretty new. Um, but yeah, uh, guitar I used to use nine through I think it's forty two, roto sounds. Um, but now I use ten through forty six, um, and I like it because. Uh, they last longer, <laughs> and um, the bends aren't as wild. They're a bit more controlled. Uh, so those are, that's nice. Um, for bass, I always used 40 through 100 and something. I have no idea. It's, it's the standard 40 gauge um, from, from Rotosound. Hmm. Personally, I've always used really thick strings. I use like 56 on the lowest end of one of my guitars. I'm thinking about going up to, I saw a string pack for like 9 to 65, so I'm like, one day I'm going to set my strings up for that. <laughs> um, I actually have uh, a Laguna LE200, which is sort of like a metal guitar, um, and I have that drop tune, so I strung it up with 12s. Um, so I do use thicker strings if I'm going to drop tune it, but um, you have to remember I'm running 10s at, yeah. on standard tuning. Uh, with a long scale guitar, yeah. or at least a standard scale, like 25.5 inch, so, yeah. And also it has a trim on it, like all my strats have trims yeah. on them, so I don't really want to mess with the trim system too much and put too much, uh, like, tension on them, so, yeah. Reggae. My dad's into reggae. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not, I mean, it's good, I like 
all right, this is going to sound so, like, naive, but I like Bob Marley, and I guess that's it. I mean, I don't really listen to reggae much. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not that big on me, but I know you like reggae, right? Yep. Yeah, I so. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, not, not that big on reggae, but it's cool. All right. Um, you like The Clash, though. Yes, I do like The Clash. Uh, not all their stuff, actually. Um, my favorite song about The Clash is probably White Riot. I like that side of The, cra- the Clash, like the yeah. straight-up, more punk stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, The Magnificent Seven's cool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Now, a statement in the form of a question again. Hendrix. Okay, Hendrix is a big deal for me. The first time I heard Food Child, and not like the slight return version with the wall pedal at the beginning, I'm talking like the original, like 15 minute long Voodoo Child. That was absolutely like musically life changing. Like, I didn't know guitar could sound like that until I heard that song. I was just like, whoa. Like, I'm very blues influenced. All my solo work and stuff has a strong um, blues feel to it, as you could probably tell. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just absolutely love it. I I don't know why. I just love that vibe. Uh, the almost, like, well, oftentimes, all the good stuff, it's, like, live, right? And even in the recordings, like, it's fairly live stuff. So, it's, um, I like that whole vibe where it's, like, really echoey and it's live and in the moment and raw. So it's, it's really, really epic. I just love blues and Hendrix's. I, I love the, the angrier, um, more distorted side of blues. Yeah. So um, Hendrix is definitely up there. Uh, you recorded the entire Step Defectors album in your basement. And so I was wondering, would you ever think of recording albums for other people? No, because I don't do it properly. (laughs) Um, I am a music um, producer and sound engineer by um, necessity, not really by choice. I enjoy it. I spent a lot of money on, uh, well, recently, not, I didn't spend a lot of money for the first album, but... Recently, I've been investing a lot of money in uh, studio gear uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and it's stuff that I I want to do to get my music out there. But I'd rather just focus on the music. So it's a necessity thing. But it is fun. So, right. well, so yeah, I wouldn't do it for other people. Because <laughs> first off, that would be disappointing and unfair to them. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I wouldn't really enjoy it because it's not my music that I'm spending time on, so, yeah. Right, all right. The Bad Brains. Awesome. Absolutely, absolutely wicked. I love them. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I haven't heard too much of their stuff. Um, but the stuff that I have heard, it's great. Like, I'm more, I'm not really that much of an old school punk guy, mm-hmm. and the hardcore stuff, I'm not really too much of a hardcore guy. Um, but they're definitely a band that I like. What about Minor Threat? Minor Threat's awesome. Um, I have their discography, which isn't saying much because it's pretty short, but, um, (laughs) you know, they're good. Uh, they're not like my go-to thing to listen to. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, good songs. So, yeah. I know John from, John Eccleston from the... Step to Factors, he's a big Minor Threat fan. Alright. Uh, now, this is an extension of Minor Threat, but in many ways a different, it's a separate thing entirely. I'm Fugazi. Okay, I think that they're better than Minor Threat, <laughs> in my own opinion. <laughs> yes, um, I agree on you on that. Same singer, right? I yes. forget his name. Ian uh, Mackay. Yeah. Um... Yeah, he's good. Uh, and I like them in Fugazi more than I like them in uh, Minor Threat. Like, Minor Threat has a much raw, like, a, a, they sound more raw, in my opinion, um, which I like generally, but for some reason I just like Fugazi more. I think it's, um, I think I just like the songs more. 
Um, waiting room thing. That's that's pretty awesome. What's that song called? Waiting room. Is it waiting room? Wait, 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 I think that's the al. I think it's the album. And then I think that's the album. I know. I can't remember if that's a song they have though. I'm right? sure it is. I'll check. I got it right here. Um, yeah, waiting room. It's a song. It's off thirteen songs. That's the album. Okay, now. What would you say toward, do you like any bands in the uh, current emo revival, like uh, Touche Amore, yeah. El La Dispute? Do you I'm like... not really, I'm not really into the emo stuff, um, so I can't, I, I saw La Dispute, um, they're not my favorite <laughs> band <laughs> out there, <laughs> I mean, other people like them, it's fine, right, it's just my opinion. Um, and for my own musical taste, I'm not a huge Lavis P fan, but they're definitely, uh, they're definitely unique and they have like good songs, but just my own like library and like what I listen to, they don't really, they're not really in there, but they're, they're definitely cool. Like definitely cool. Now, your fans want to know. I don't have fans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, Go ahead. Who, yes, you do. They'll be watching this. Your fans want to know. Brown eyes or green eyes? Uh, black eyes, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's like, there's some pretty stunning eyes out there. So, you know, they're all good. Whatever, you know, do your thing. Everything could look good. All right. Are you influenced at all? Uh, this is an odd question, but are you influenced at all by, uh, Jet? Hip hop, for example. Um, I feel like, all right. So I'm influenced by Rage Against the Machine, which has a heavy hip hop and rap influence, right? So maybe in a weird, like, secondary kind of way, but I don't listen to hip hop or rap or anything like that on my own time. Uh, it's pretty much just straight up blues, rock, punk, metal. Um, so yeah, I don't really listen to rap or hip-hop, so I can't really say that's an influence. Um, now, going into the uh, mixing you did on the album, for the Unstuck Defectors album, um, I'm, actually very, I'm actually very curious. I personally like the mixing job you did. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, yes. That makes one person. <laughs> my, You're the one. <laughs> I, I found it very bass-heavy, which I liked. Um, and But the vocals... Um, my one complaint is that the vocals were a little hard to hear sometimes. Was that uh, purposeful, or was that just a consequence? I don't know. I think, um... Uh, maybe subconsciously I kind of wanted it in the background because <laughs> it wasn't, like, the best job, but I don't think it was the intention. I think it was a mistake. So, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, that album is full of mistakes, man. <laughs> That's just another one of them. <laughs> How long did it take you to record the album? It's record the album from start to finish. I think finish. it took, I think it took um, two or I think it took two weeks, uh, and it wasn't like all recording every day. It was like we finished drums in like two or three days, um, bass probably in two days, and guitars in three or four. Yeah. So yeah, um, and that was all within a span of two weeks with days of breaks in between. So, yeah. Hmm. Next project, do which you plan on um, releasing in summer next year. Um, how are you in the process of writing or recording or just preparing? Uh, a combination of writing and preparing. I want to do something... Um, I want to do something real and something that helps convey certain emotions um that i need to sort of get out there uh so there's a certain kind of song format that i would like to try and certain kind of song style that i'd like to try that i feel would well like very it would convey it well um but at the same time i want it to be different in a way or something that people can't find elsewhere so it's like i don't want to sound like another band because then you just go listen to the other band right so um i'm in the process of writing and in the process of preparing and you might think that a summer release is a bit soon 
but once I get going, it happens pretty quick. So I think it might be summer. It might not be. It might be fall. So who knows? Um, if this was a big budget band with multiple members and producers and record labels and stuff, this thing would not be ready for another year or two or something like that, something crazy. But yeah, you know, um, I'm in the process of writing and conceptualizing, I guess. Mm. Now, tell me about the fourth member of your band, the Skull Mask. Oh, uh, Steve? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he's just been down there all the time, so, you know, he got pissed off that we were making so much noise, so he decided to join. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> what instrument does Steve play? Plays everything and nothing at the same time. <laughs> Fascinating. Do you have any influences influences in terms of production or engineering? In no, um, now, because I am not very good at keeping on top of things, I haven't checked out who actually did these mixing jobs and stuff. But if you listen to the um, Puddle of Mud Life on Display album, yeah. huge fan of the um, mixing job on that. And the Rage Against the Machine... Um, Oh, fuck, what's it called? I cannot... Oh, Evil Empire, right. Because um, it was like bass in the left and guitar in the right for most of the songs. That was cool. I really like that. So, I think those are my two favorite mixing jobs. So, I'm going to probably go for the more Puddle of Mud style mixing job because it's a two-guitar band. And having two guitars in one ear and then bass in the left would be kind of weird. So, yeah, I have mixing influences, I guess. Very fascinating. Can you slap? slap I, I can. I, yeah, I know I can. Um, I don't really like it that much. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's not really something that's in my style, but I can for when people say, like, you know, slap the bass. <laughs> you know, I can. So, yeah. Now, being the ba would you identify yourself as being more of a bass player or guitar player? More of a bass player. I started with bass. It's just sort of where I learned everything. Hmm. All right. Um, what's the biggest uh, problem that arises about being a bass player? Problems? Um, not many. I mean, to, you have to be a certain kind of person to be a bass player. Um, you have to realize that you got to put your ego on the side and you have to support the songs as opposed to being in the forefront. But at the same time, a lot of bass players take that as an excuse to be lazy and play really half-assed in the background and not to be unique. Like, a lot of people just put up the normal, round, bassy bass tone and then just pluck away really quietly in the background. Uh, I think people should experiment more, try different things and see different ways of playing things. Um, my bass tone, for example, is fairly... Um, it's fairly aggressive, I guess, um, and it cuts through a mix. It has a low end, but it also has a high mid, uh, high mid range, yeah. so um, you can hear it. Uh, it it kind of goes. If this is the guitar mid range, it both has a low end underneath it and a bit of a high end on top. So I cut through um, in a mix when I play bass. Uh, so. I don't think there are any problems. I know what I have to do, like, as a bass player. So that's partly why I didn't want to play bass for this next project, was because um, I know I have to do a lot of interesting, or at least the way I like to play, I would have to do a lot of interesting fills and whatnot and transitions, and it's difficult to do those um, melodic parts while singing. So I'm going to go for more guitar Approach, uh, guitar based approach this time around so the songs are going to be written um, taking in mind that I am going to be singing and playing guitar at the same time alright at your second show what was the fe describe the feeling of seeing a mosh pit break out in the middle of <laughs> one of your songs actually if you watch um, I think it was the fossil video on YouTube if you watch it you'll notice as soon as that happened I think like I, I like 
I think I missed the line of <laughs> like lyrics and I just screamed yeah at the top of my lungs because I was just like hell yeah <laughs> finally <laughs> you know so yeah I mean like it was great it's beyond words put your music on vinyl when would you be oh would, would I put um music on vinyl maybe if enough people cared and like people would buy it but i don't have i actually personally don't have a record player um and i have some vinyl stuff um but i don't have anything to listen to it on so like it's not really that big i'm fine with cds like i know this is a big culture saying um vinyl's better sound quality and stuff and it probably is i mean why not but i'm content with cds you know 320 kilobytes a second um it's just as good as um for, for me, it's just as good as anything else I can get. If I really cared about audio that much, I'd put it, I'd download like Flack or something. Um, completely lossless. Um, but, you know, it's just as good in, as vinyl, I think. Flack, I think. Uh, it's a bit but yeah, I'm not, supposed to be. I'm not really a big vinyl guy. So I don't know if I would put something out on vinyl, but if I was in a band that had a following and people would be interested in something like that then yeah I'd put it out where do you see yourself in three years uh in a band uh hopefully uh locally successful and probably opening up for some pretty cool bands that might come through hopefully something like that uh i I do want to be in music um, three years from now, definitely. I mean, that's pretty much the goal. So, um, yeah, a band, have a couple CDs out, um, be successful in that respect locally, and have some good band members uh, to play with. So, yeah. Anything you want to say or add? Um, not too much. I mean, all I can say is thanks for being interested. Um, go check out Cloud Everest. Uh, keep your eyes open for when my stuff starts up, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, just thanks for taking the time. It was cool. Mm. Would you like to play a number if, uh, you don't mind, if you wouldn't mind? Play a number? You want me to play a song? Mm, anything really. <laughs> anything really. Um, hmm. I'll I'll do something. I'll, let me just uh, get it, get it. I'll probably do an instrumental piece actually. Everybody, Dev Maharaj, take it away, Dev. <laughs> This is one of the softer songs off the new album. Don't worry, I'll have the heavy stuff too. But it's sort of like, you know, a bit chilled out. So here we go.
thing. I think I messed it up, <laughs> but it's all right. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> times all right <laughs> thank you dev thank you dev that was amazing oh thanks <laughs> so, no problem man and thank you for appearing on my show you're the, the first episode we've done yeah. it's cool do you have anything to say to the people before you go uh keep checking back here for other interviews this guy knows a lot of cool people so definitely gonna get some nice people on on the show right so it's gonna be wicked Rock on, bass man. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs>